that you just come, Lord. We pray for a touch of Jesus this morning, Lord. We pray for a fresh revelation of who you are, your love, Lord, for us, Lord. We, we want to know more. We want to go deeper. We want to go higher, Lord. We want to go wider. But, Lord, for your word says that no eye has seen and no ear has heard, no mind can comprehend what you have prepared for those that love you. And so, Lord, that is what we pursue this morning. Father, this morning we just want to declare our love to you. Help us. Help us this morning, Lord. We, we want our lives to be worshipped to you. Worship to you. Worship to you. We just want to honor you this morning, Holy Spirit. Thank you that you are present in this place. Your sweet presence, Lord, we thank you. You are so welcome in this place. Just come and have your way in and through us this morning. Have your way in and through us, Lord. In Jesus' wonderful and awesome name. In His wonderful and awesome name. In His name. The name that is above all names. The name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a praise, family. Let's give the Lord a praise. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Are you well? You may have a seat. Good morning to our precious Facebook family. We hope you are well. We miss you. Can't wait to see you soon. Family, it is a wonderful day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. And look at you. Not even rain kept you away. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give yourselves a round of applause. Can I see by a show of hands who is visiting us for the first time? Please raise up your hand high if you're visiting us for the first time. Whoop, 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 whoop. Yeah, you are welcome. You are welcome. Please hold up your hands so that our beloved ushers can get something to you. Well, family, my name is Pastor Lee Hunter. For those of you that do not know me, and I am the spiritual mother of this house. What a privilege it is for me. Um, we welcome you to our home today. It is our greatest privilege to have you here. But today it is a very special day. You can see that we have some guests of honor. Who can tell me where they are? Guys, can I please ask our Teshuva graduates, please stand to your feet. Please stand to your feet. Can I please ask everybody, let's give them the biggest round of applause. We salute you this morning, our guests of honor, the Teshuva graduates. Thank you. You may take your seats. It is a very special day. It is a very special service. Straight after the service today, we have this wonderful graduation ceremony where we are graduating these amazing students. They are graduating from Teshuva emotional restoration and deliverance ministry. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Come on, let's give them another round of applause. They look so beautiful. So we're going to ask you when the clipboards come past you, please just fill in your name for us. It does not make you a member. Uh, we will not hound you. It just helps us to serve you better. So please just fill in the clipboard and pass it on to the person next to you. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Pastor Percy Hunter, that will be bringing the word for today. Can we give him a round of applause? Thank you. Can we give Jesus praise in the house? All the glory, all the praise belongs to him. Amen. Well, good morning, family. And um, it's also a very special day for me. Um, you know, it's, it's amazing to see what God has done in the last few years. And uh, as, I, as I look at the, the students on my left, you know, truly just to see a promise of the Lord coming to fruition. And you know, today we are here to celebrate them, but also to celebrate 
you know, what God is doing, not only in this house, but also in the province. You know, it's God's heart that people are healed and restored so that we can run our race and that we can finish our race. Amen. But I also want to just welcome two people in my life, two people that are very close to my heart. And um, they're visiting us today. So I'm going to ask my mom and my sister just to stand. For many of you, this is your grandmother and this is your other sister. So can we just give them also... <laughs> and by the way, they're also graduating today. Isn't that amazing? They, they, come, from, uh, they come from Mossel Bay. They're from Dana Bay. Uh, uh, sorry? They drove all the way to be here today. And uh, so, yes, absolutely. And you know, my, my mom's not going to maybe appreciate this, but she's 75 years old. And I say that you're never old to study, never too old to study. So we celebrate you today, mom. You know, we celebrate your graduation. Praise the Lord. Well, family, I hope that you are excited this morning. You know, the Lord has given me a message. And, you know, as I say, it is always first and foremost for me before I share it with you. And I truly believe that this is God's heart for us this morning. And the title of my message, it is time to dream again. You know, I think after lockdown, there's so much that happened. And with regards to our economy, so many people have lost their jobs. You know, so many ministries have closed down. So many things have happened. But I truly believe that, you know, this morning I'm trusting and I know that the Holy Spirit is going to come and just stir in our hearts once again to go and take out that old dreams. You know, just go and revisit those old dreams and, and trust the Holy Spirit to come and just blow some fire on those dreams again. I want to say to you this this morning that you know what COVID and uh, the lockdown has no power over God's plan for your life. You see Jeremiah 29 11 still stands. It says, for I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you and to give you a future and a hope. And so God is still on the move and he's inviting all his sons and daughters to come and be on this amazing journey with him. And so I want to invite you this morning to just open your heart, just open your heart, open your mind this morning. There are many of you sitting in the house this morning that have surrendered yourself, you know, to the things of the world, you know, the heaviness and the burdens of the world, and you've laid down the dream that God has placed in your heart. And I want to say to you today that I believe with a whole heart that when you leave here today, that that dream is once again fired up, that you will run and not grow weary, that you will walk and not faint. And that is my prayer for us today. Amen. So family, it is time to dream again. And uh, I'm trusting this morning that you will have a stir in your spirit. God has a spiritual journey for each one of us. And you and I, we are somewhere on that journey. But here's the thing. You have another step to take. If you are still breathing and you still have another step to take, God is saying, the light is green. Let's go. The light is green. Let's go. Let's get moving. You know, each one of us in this room, we were created to make a difference. But how do I make a difference? Well, if you are part of a church and you are part of a church family, then we start in the church, right where you are. Get involved. Do something. Ask your leaders. Ask your pastors. How can I help? You see, God created each one of us with and for a purpose. You know, we have a speaking God and he's trying to speak to us constantly. And you know, sometimes we say, well, I can't hear the Lord. I don't know what dream or vision God has given me. You see, God doesn't have a speaking problem. I have a hearing problem. Amen. You see, he's trying to say some things to me and you. He's constantly speaking and communicating with each one of us. His language is dreams and visions. And he will give you ideas, supernatural ideas, creative ideas. And I want to say to you this morning, open your spiritual ears, open your heart, because I want to say to you this morning that God is speaking to you and he's saying to each one of us in this room, it is time to dream again. I want to share with you a very familiar scripture and I want to, I want to read it from different um, translations. And uh, it's Proverbs 29, verse 18. And I'm first going to read it from the New Living Translation. It says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Now, it's not speaking of a physical death. 
It is when your marriage dies, when hopes die, your aspirations die, your emotions die. You know, for a lot of people, they are the, the living dead. They are walking around dead, alive, but dead. And maybe, just maybe, all they need today is a God dream. It's time to dream again. I want to read the same scripture from the NIV, and it says, Where there is no revelation, people cast off restraint. You know, these people, they, they get a case of, who cares? For many, this has become their life mantra. Whatever. This is the worst mode to be in. To be in survival mode. And I'm here to encourage each one of us. You were created for significance. Not just for survival. You don't have to stay where you are. You can make a decision today to say, I am going to dream again because God has a wonderful and awesome plan for me. And I'm going to take hands with Him and we are going to run this race together. Amen. I want to also read it from the message translation. And this is, I'm just paraphrasing it. It says, if people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what He reveals, they are most blessed. Now, very interesting, if you look at the word blessed in Hebrew, it is defined as happy in my soul. Happy in my soul. You know, there is a, a soul contentment found when you are doing the things that matter. My goal today is to get you dreaming again. Every time I don't have a vision, not dreaming, I, I don't feel okay. I feel sick. I feel depressed. I feel heavy laden. But every time... I am dreaming and are visionaring regardless of my circumstances. I feel better. I feel healthy. I feel revived, rejuvenated, excited, and I feel pumped up. But I want you to notice something very interesting. Notice that the word dream and the word health is so close together in the Hebrew. You know, translators did not know how and which word to put there. So dreams and health are synonymous. Think about that for a moment. You see, you can get healthy again in your soul. Your marriage can get healthy again when you have a vision. Your life can get healthy if you have a vision. You see, circumstances do not determine your happiness. Your dreams, visions, and revelations will. Psalm 126 verse 1 in the NIV says, When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, and we know that Zion refers to the church, we were like those who dreamt. You see, when I was in the process of being restored, it is because I was dreaming. Verse 2. Our mouths were filled with laughter and our tongues with songs of joy. And family of God, this morning I want us to get back to this place where our mouths are filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. I don't know if you know about the movie. Many, many uh, years ago, there was a movie called The Bucket List. And it was probably not the most holy, you know, sort of <laughs> story. But, you know, there's something that, 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 that really spoke to my heart. It was about these two old men, and they both ended up in hospital. And that's actually where they met. And the one was extremely rich, and the other one wasn't as rich. But he, he had a bucket list. He had some um, things on his list that he still wanted to do before he died. And so these two decided to go on this journey and, to, and just go and, and live out everything on the bucket list. And so this morning, I want to I wanna say to each one of us, you know, sometimes we become so spiritual that we forget to live. And I want to encourage each one of you this morning, why don't you start a bucket list? Start a bucket list. And the question is, do you put things on the list that you, cannot, that you know cannot happen? Yes, you should. Because we serve a God that can do exceedingly above all. Ephesians 3 verse 20 says, Now to Him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. You know, in 1985, I was 16 years old, and I rededicated my life. And I knew in that moment that Jesus called me to ministry. And as I finished high school, I went into the world and through a series of wrong choices, I moved further and further away from my call. 
but the call, that dream, still burned in my heart. And as I looked at my life at that point in time, I, I knew that this was an impossibility. There was no way that I could turn back and step into my call. And I remember so clearly one night, we came from the club, me and my friends, and, and it was in the early morning hours, and we were just sitting around the bar, and, you know, we were highly intoxicated. And I looked at my friends, and I said to them, one day, I'm going to work for Jesus. You see, that dream burned so deep in my heart that not even drugs or alcohol could keep me out of that which God had for me. And today, I'm dreaming again. And I'm dreaming for more. Because I want to go higher and I want to go further. Because God has so much for me, but also for you. So I want to say to you this morning, keep dreaming. Never say never. Allow your heart to dream. Because God who is speaking to you and have a wonderful, th wonderful things to tell you, He has a place in His grand design, custom made for each one of you. And so I want to say to you, get yourself dreaming again. You have an assignment. Go home and at least start a bucket list. Have some fun things on there, but also have some meaningful things on there. There are five different kinds of people in the church today, and we're talking about dream. It's time to dream again. The first person is the person that does not have a dream. Person that does not have a dream. None. This person has no vision. And I'm not being uglier this morning. But I want to say this. If there is no dream, it might be, be because we are not connected with the living God anymore. You might not have faith in God. Hebrews 11 verse 1 says the following. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You see, as soon as you have faith in your heart, in God, God will drop dreams on the inside of you. You see, in the early church, when God established the church, we see in Acts 2, the outpouring of the Spirit. This was a fulfillment of a prophecy that you and I will dream, we will prophesy, and we will have visions. And this is what we as a church must do. This is what we do. Amen? So when we connect with our living God, we dream again. For some of us, we need to get close to God again. Sometimes when we want to hear God's voice we need to turn down the world's volume and allow God to speak to you. Get close to the Lord again. You know, in Jeremiah 33, it says the following, Call to me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. Great and mighty things. Amen. You see, God is unctioning us this morning. He's unctioning us to get close to Him again. We need to pray and we need to listen. The second person, this person has a, a wrong dream. Now, this is not talking about a bad dream or a sinful dream. It, it may even be good, but it's not God. You have allowed yourself to dream about something that has no earthly pursuits in it. And there's nothing connected to God. God does not mind you pursuing things, but God has so much more for you. In Acts 20 verse 24, we see Paul speaks and he says, But none of these things move me. Paul is saying he found the greatest joy in his life when he pursued what God destined for him. So how do I get to a, a God dream? Easy, family. Just surrender. Surrender this morning your life. Say to the Lord, Lord, I give you my life. I give you my things. I give you my everything. I give you my ministry. I give you my business. Surrender completely. You see, we only have what we have because of the generous God that He is. And it's a daily surrender to God and His purposes. But here's what I want to say on that. Make sure your dream is not just for you. The third person, this is the person that has a, a stale dream. Now, what is a stale dream? It burned at one point. And probably due to delay or through a set of problems that you did not plan on, it is nearly flickering. It is nearly hanging in there. It is probably dying out. Here is what we know about a stale dream. We do not go back into it casually. You will probably have to do something drastic to get back to it. 
Now, I'm not telling you what to do this morning, but prayer and fasting works for me. Try and disconnect with the world again as much as you can and connect to Him as much as you can. The reason we go stale is because we have too much of the world and not enough God in our lives. You see, we need to sometimes separate and we need to see and seek the Lord so that the fire can start again to burn on the inside of us. 2 Timothy 1 verse 6. I'm reading from the NIV and it says, Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of hands. You see, we need to fan into flame the gift that God has for us. It's time to get that dream back, family. The fourth type of person, this person has a a vague dream. You have a dream, but you've not spent time really to articulate it or to dream it more thoroughly. And most importantly, to write it down. There is a verse that says, write it down. God says, write it down, write down what I reveal to you. Family, can I encourage you today to get into the habit that if you want a vibrant Christian life, living a life of purpose, to write down your dream, your vision. Habakkuk 2 verse 2. Then the Lord answered me and said, write down the vision and make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it. You see, if you don't write it down, you won't be able to read it. And if you don't read it, you won't run with it. So I want to encourage you this morning. Take some next steps. It is time to dream again. Then the last person, this person has the dream that we want. It is a God dream. It is a God dream. This is the dream that you and I want. A God dream is several things. And the first, the first point I want to highlight here, the God dream is a God-honoring dream. It does not puff up. It is not self-serving. It does not run with its own agenda, but it's there to glorify the King of Kings. You see, one day when we go to heaven, there will be two judgment seats in heaven, the white throne judgment seat. And this is the seat where those that have denied Jesus Christ will be judged and they will be cast into the lake of fire. But then there's a second seat, and that is the Bema seat, or the, the, the seat of Christ. And, um, and we see with this, it does not, that the second judgment seat, this is now the Bema seat, does not determine your external existence or your eternal existence, but will determine what your eternal existence will be like. So it is a reward seat. It is called the Bema seat. And this is where we will receive rewards for fulfilling God's purpose for our lives. You see, the dream that is burning on the inside of you is a God dream. And that dream will bring glory and honor to God. And one day, we will stand before the King of Kings and give an account whether we have fulfilled that mandate in our lives. As a God dream, we now see that it is God honoring. Number two, the God dream is a, a well done, good and faithful servant kind of dream, right? It is also a culture defining dream. What do I mean by that? We are part of a generation. And, and what would you like the world to remember about us as a generation? I don't know about you, but I want to be remembered as a generation that was on fire for Jesus. A generation that brought in the last harvest. Amen. And so it needs to be, it needs to be a culture defining dream. It is a dream where we as a generation say enough is enough. Not an hour watch, Satan, in Jesus name. Amen. And then it's also, it's also a heaven impacting dream. It's where we plunder hell and populate heaven. And then lastly, and I want you to hear this, because this is probably one of the big reasons why many people have laid down their dreams. The God dream is a dream that is impossible. The God dream is a dream that is impossible. A God dream will always require God's help. It is where I know I'm so in over my head. Things that God has asked me to do is bigger than me. But it keeps me on my knees. And it will take great faith and a great God to pull it off. So don't limit the Lord because you cannot see with your natural eyes. That dream that is burning on the inside of you, the only thing it needs is God to see the fulfillment 
of that. As I close this morning, I want to quickly just share with you a short story. And we all know the story of the man of Bethesda, the blind man of Bethesda. And I want you just to listen with fresh ears this morning and, 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 and open your heart and just see and hear what the Lord is saying to you this morning. In Mark 8 verse 22, they came to Bethesda and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. You know, interesting that he brought his friend that was blind and then he told Jesus how to do it. I, I don't think it's a good idea, right? So Jesus didn't touch him. Verse 23, he took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. You know, sometimes in order for God to speak to you and me, you have to change the environment that you are currently in. Amen. Let's give Jesus praise. And when he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked, do you see? You see, he asked to touch him. Jesus decided to do the spit thing. You see, sometimes we think Jesus is in a system. And Jesus says, don't create the rules for me to work in your life. And when he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked, do you see? He looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking around. Now the question here this morning is, if he is blind, how does he know how trees look like? There's only one answer, family. He once had sight, and he had lost it. He knew how trees look like. And then we get to the two words that I want us to hear today, family of God, CFC, Bombella. I want you to hear these two words. Once more. Once more. Verse 25. And then once more Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes, and he saw everything clearly. You see, Jesus, that had the ability to heal perfectly, prayed for the guy a second time. And these are the two powerful words in the story. God is saying to each one of us this morning, God is saying, I'm willing, even though you had a vision, and you lost your vision, you lost your dream, I'm ready to give you a once more experience. Once more. Once more. Can we give Jesus praise this morning? Because family, it is time to dream again. Praise the Lord. Let's give Jesus praise. Let's give Him praise. Father, we thank You this morning as we come into Your wonderful presence, Lord, and thank You for Your Word. Father, I pray this morning, Holy Spirit, that You come and, and just fire us up, Lord, that as we leave this place, Lord, that You give us a once more, once more experience, Lord. Fire up those dreams, those dreams that are dormant, Lord, that we will step out and fulfill Your call and purpose for our lives. You have destined, You have created us to do great exploits. And so, Father, as we leave this place today, guide and lead us, Lord. Let us expect more. Let us go higher and further in Jesus' name. Whilst our eyes are closed, nobody looking around. I just want to give everybody in the room just an opportunity. If you've never given your life to Jesus, then I would like to pray with you this morning. You see, without God, there is no vision. Without God, you have no life. It is in and through Him that we enjoy the abundant life. So I would like to extend this invitation to everybody in this room. To nobody looking around. If you've never given your life to Jesus, I'm going to ask you just at the count of three, just to raise your hand. I'm speaking to our Facebook friends as well. If that's you, we want to pray with you as well this morning. Or maybe you used to serve Jesus. You had a dream, but you've lost your dream. And in that, you've lost Jesus. And maybe this morning, it's time to come back. 
There is no condemnation for you. It doesn't matter where you've been, what you've done in your life. There is forgiveness of sins because Jesus already paid the ultimate price on the cross for you. If that is you, I'm going to ask you just to raise your hand at the count of three. I believe that this is your day, this is your moment. And then lastly, you've served Jesus for many years, but today you just, you need just confirmation that if you die today, that you will go to heaven. I would like to pray with you. So whilst our eyes are closed, let's all say this together, but I want to just ask everybody, those that want to give their lives to Jesus, those that are coming back, and those that need confirmation, just raise your hand, please. One, two, three. Thank you. I see the hands. I see the hands. Thank you. Just keep your hands up. Just keep your hands up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to ask us all to just say this after me, and especially those that raise their hands. Let's say this together. Heavenly Father, today, I repent of all my sins. I know that I'm a sinner. And Lord, I ask that you please forgive me of all my sins. Lord, today I declare that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that He died for me on a cruel cross, that He went to hell, He was raised from the dead, and is now seated in heaven. Father, I ask you, Come into my life. Come into my heart. And be my Lord. Be my Savior. And I thank you that as from today, that I'm born again. And that heaven is my home. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Can we give Jesus some praise? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, family, we now have the wonderful opportunity to honor and worship the Lord with our finances. And... Uh, if you are in need of an envelope, you will find one under your seat. If you are not a member of this church, then please remember that you do not tithe in this house, but you are more than welcome to sow a seed. But before I welcome Pastor Lee to the stage, I'm going to ask you just to direct your attention to the screens. Thank you. Do you suffer from severe anger? rejection or demonic oppression because of your past? Are you called to heal the brokenhearted and set the captives free? Are you in bondage because of curses, ancestral worship or demonic influence and need deliverance? If the answer is yes, then I have the perfect Church for Bella, serving under the leadership of Pastor Percy and Pastor Lee Hunter. By profession, I am a registered nurse, and by calling, I am an emotional restoration worker. For the last 12 years, I have done three different emotional restoration courses and counseled numerous people over this period of time. In 2015, I felt led by God to put together an emotional restoration course. With all the valuable information that I have gained, I did this. So I'm inviting you, come with me on a journey where your life will be forever changed and which will enable you to forever change the lives around you. In this one year course, you will master how to deliver people from bloodline curses, bondages because of ancestral worship, how to deal with sexual sin, sin, salvation and sanctification, spiritual cleansing of your home, in utero experience, parental wounds, death of a loved one, abortions and miscarriages, biblical principles of marriage, kingdom of darkness versus kingdom of light, and deliverance, among other subjects. Over this 12-month period, 
We will guide you through 20 self-study electronic modules with interactive PowerPoint videos. After each module, there will be a quiz to complete. Note that there will be no formal exams. Every second week, there will be a practical session to apply what you have learned in the modules. This is for the students that wish to become emotional restoration workers themselves. The aim of this course is to equip emotional restoration workers to go out into their communities and help people in need. Please note that this course is not SAPWA accredited. Many people's lives have been changed by this course and here are what some of the previous graduates had to say. Good afternoon everyone. My name is Kawa Sumika. I'm a third year student at CSE in Bombella. For me, it really took my counseling to another level. I've been doing it, but I didn't follow any processes. I didn't know how to, but now I have the tool that taught me, and it has given me confidence. You know, that is why I can even counsel a 11 year old and take her through the process. And I believe that if you do it, you will not regret it. So take the opportunity and encourage everyone you know to attend this process. It's a worth every minute of it. With emotional restoration, it doesn't end the day you do your last session. Trust me, like a few days later or even weeks later, things will still be coming out. And the good thing about it is that it is biblical. Emotional restoration is biblical. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, and who the Son sets free is free indeed. So the other day, it was days or weeks after emotional restoration came, a friend of mine, she triggered, she triggered, she triggered me, <laughs> like she triggered that, those emotions of unforgiveness, those memories of unforgiveness, and I just broke down. It had never happened before, I just broke down and I started crying, and from there, I think I prayed also, and then I was fine. So basically, one of the good things about emotional restoration, it reveals hidden unforgiveness. Yes, it is the hidden unforgiveness. It also shows you the sources of some of your bitterness. And it, it helps you to interact better with people in the sense that when you see certain behaviors, you can tell the sim that these are symptoms of pain and all that. And you can, re you can react better because you are now equipped you and you have the knowledge. And also, may, it also made me realize that I must treat people carefully, especially how I speak to them, because these hurts and pains they were caused by people. So you don't want to be one of the people causing pain in other people's lives. If you would like to find out more about this course, you can contact us on 072-768-0474 or 082-335. 9347 or email us at marita at .org .za or visit us at Unit 2 Super Corner Building, Silver Street, Nalspray. We hope to hear from you soon. Amen! We do hope to hear from you soon, family. I want to know who here has ever had an injury. Oh, so this is a very healthy room. So no one's had an injury or a wound or anything that happened to you. Maybe you even slept funny and you could not, you had back pain. Anybody? Okay. Praise the Lord for all these healthy people in Mombela. But if you've had an injury or you've had back pain or you've had a wound... Your mobility is affected, am I right? You could hardly walk. Every time you tried to do the things you naturally did, you now felt the pain because it was so sore. I broke my foot once and my leg was in a cast. How many of you know I could not run? Because I had crutches. So my injury inf affected being able to walk. Now, family, this is nothing other than what God wants us to do here. We have wounds. People, when people hurt us, it affects us. 
And that affects the way we walk through our lives. It affects whether or not we can run, whether or not we can act or do the things we did before. Now, if you leave a wound untreated, what's going to happen? It's going to fester. It's going to become infected. It's going to become a much bigger problem than what it was initially. So that is why we believe the Lord has raised up this ministry to heal and restore his children. Because God wants us to run the race that he's intended for us to. He wants us to have an amazing life, not just when we get to heaven, but he wants us to be free, healed, delivered, restored right now whilst we walk in. So if you fall in that category, if anybody has hurt you before in your life and you've not dealt with the pain, the hurt, the disappointment, I can tell you right now, as all these students here can attest, there is a wound and it's affecting the way you live your life. It is affecting your entire family. You saw all the things that can go wrong. You know when you can't get breakthroughs, when things just keep on going wrong, it has to do with this. So we want to encourage everybody, whether you want to study to help other people, whether you want to do it for yourself, we want you to consider giving the Lord one year of your life. Come, be healed and restored so that you can run the race that he's called you to run. So that you can live a life of freedom of joy for you and if you don't want to do it for you do it for your children and do it for your children's children because if you don't deal with the hurts and the pains it will unfortunately be passed on to the next generation and the next generation you be the person in your family that draws the line and say no more satan you will no longer steal from my family you will no longer steal from my life amen Anybody excited? Praise the Lord. So that was just the little introduction of why we are here today. But why I am here right now is to talk about, yes, you've guessed it, money, 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 money. The doors are locked. No one can run. Yes, this is a church where we talk about money. Why? The Lord spoke more about money than anything else. Let me put my timer on. My husband thinks I should have put it on five minutes ago. The Lord spoke more about money than heaven or hell combined. Do you know that? So if God could speak about money, then surely he expects his servants to speak about money. And why does he want us to talk about money? Because he wants to bless you, family. Who wants to be blessed by the Lord? Amen. Who wants to participate in God's blessing program? Much better than, uh, than the grant system of Sasa. Trust me, God's blessing program, much greater rewards. And you don't have to stand in such long queues. Who's excited about that? All right. So today I want to talk about investing in Jesus' ministry. And that investing in his ministry brings great rewards. We're going to read from Luke 5, and I must tell you, this scripture reading has changed my life. I just, it was such an amazing, well, it's not a story, such an amazing miracle, such an amazing, so I want to encourage you, go and meditate on this, on this piece of scripture, because it will give you so much. But we are talking about investing in Jesus' ministry. Whenever people invest, they're interested in great rewards, Right? You don't put your money somewhere because you just, you don't expect it to grow. You want it to grow. I mean, you want a return on it. Luke 5 verse 1 from the New Living Translation. One day as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, great crowds pressed in on him to listen to the word of God. He noticed two empty boats at the water's edge. For the fishermen had left them, and were washing their nets. Stepping in to one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, its owner, to push out into the water a little bit so that he could sit in the boat and he taught the crowds from there. So I want you to notice here that 
Peter was using his fishing business, he was using his fishing business to support the ministry of Jesus. When you sow your finances into the offering today, you too are supporting and investing in the ministry of Jesus. Now let's see what happened. Verse 4. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Now go out where it is deeper and let down your nets to catch few fish. Is that what, God, is that what Jesus said? To catch? To catch many fish. Not some. Sorry for that translation. My translation says many fish. Many fish. Now notice that Peter did not have to ask Jesus to bless his business. Jesus blessed his business automatically. Why? Because he invested into Jesus' ministry. He sowed his boat into the ministry of Jesus. So the blessing of Jesus was automatic. He didn't have to say, now, Lord, you know that I gave you a, a stage where no one was pressing up against you, and I think that, you know, um, maybe I deserve some compensation. He didn't have to say a word. Galatians 6 verse 7. Whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. So what Jesus said in Luke 68 also confirms this. That the blessing of Jesus when you sow into his ministry is automatic. Luke 638 says, if you give, you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full measure, pressed down, shaken together, to make room for more and running over. Whatever measure you use in giving, large or small, it will be used to give back to you. The same measure will be used to give back to you. So let's look at what happened next. Verse 5. Master, Simon replied, we worked hard all last night. Now, I want to give it to you, the faster Lee slash attitude, if this was me. This is the way I think Peter would have said it. And he would have been like, Master, we've worked all night. We toiled all night and we caught nothing. But if you say so, at your word, I will do it. That's my personal inter interpretation. You know, when they say emphasis, my own. That's how I think he would have answered. Because if I fished all night and I caught nothing, and Jesus said to me, go out to the deep where I just was all night, okay? And I know because I personally checked there's no fish there because I spent the whole night looking for them. That would have been my attitude. And this time, say this time, their nets were so full, they began to tear. How many of you know that Peter was happy, very grateful, that he did not give the Lord attitude or lip? That he did not say no at that invitation, at that instruction. How many of you know how grateful he was that he obeyed the Lord? Because had he not done that, maybe he would have sat by and see how the second boat got full of fish, the biggest fish he's ever seen in his life, the biggest catch he's ever seen in his life, knowing that he had the opportunity, but he missed it. There was none of that. Why? Because he obeyed. Amen? Verse 7, a shout for help brought the partners in the other boat. And soon both boats were filled with fish on the verge of sinking. When Simon Peter realized what had happened, he fell to his knees before Jesus and he said, 
oh Lord, please leave me because I'm too much of a sinner to be around you. Why? Because he knew he was in, in the presence of divinity. He knew he was in the presence of the supernatural. Amen? Because what he just witnessed was not natural. For Peter, verse 9, was all struck by the size of their catch, as were the others with him. All struck meaning like this. They had never seen it before. They had never seen such a big catch that filled both boats that were busy sinking. Maybe their business, their fishing business, him and his partner's business was busy sinking. They fished all night. They caught nothing. Now the boat was sinking under the weight of the blessings. Amen. That is the God we serve. That is how much He wants to bless us. Verse 10. His partners, James and John, the sons of Ze Zebedee, were also amazed. Jesus replied to Simon, Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be fishing for people. And as soon as they landed, they left everything and followed Jesus him. Can you imagine that? A miracle so powerful in your life that the moment you get to shore, no questions asked, you leave everything behind to follow the miracle maker. This gang, Peter, James, John, they were hardened fishermen. They were professional fishermen. They knew what they were doing. But even they were clearly shocked at what they had just witnessed. They were shocked at this miracle. Their actions tell us that. Remember the what? It was a supernatural blessing on Peter's fishing business. Perhaps you need a supernatural miracle today. Perhaps you need a supernatural miracle on your business. Perhaps you need a supernatural miracle in your bank account, in your grocery cupboard, in your life. This is your opportunity to give into Jesus' ministry. Let's give generously because then we will receive generously. We will receive generously from God because Hebrews 13 verse 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if we expect God to bless us like he blessed Peter's fishing business, he will do it. Do you believe it? Or is, was Peter more special than you are? So you can sit here today with the same expectation. God is extravagant. He would love to bless us all the same. He wants your boats to sink under the weight of the blessings. That is the God we serve. So lift up your right hand and let's confess this together. Jesus loves me. Jesus will not do more for Peter than he is willing to do for me. As I sow my financial seed into the ministry of Jesus today, I believe Jesus will abundantly supernaturally bless me with great with great with great financial harvest do you believe it family 
Give the Lord a praise for your great financial harvest. Amen. Let us close our eyes. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the privilege we have of sowing into your ministry. We thank you, Lord, that you are the God that wants to bless us with so much, Lord. With such overflow that our boats, our businesses, our lives, our families, that, that we, we almost sink under the weight of all the blessings that you lavishly bestow upon us. Thank you, Lord, that when we invest our seed in your ministry, we can expect these abundant blessings and this harvest. We receive it today. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody that loved the Lord said, Amen, Amen, Amen. I would like to direct your attention to the screens. Thank you. Family, if you need any information with regards to everything that we've just shared with you, then you're more than welcome just to sign up at the info desk downstairs, and we will definitely make sure that we phone you on Monday or Tuesday just to catch up with you and to give you all the information that you need. But I really want to just highlight our baptism taking place on the 20th of November. If you've not yet been baptized, and please sign up at the info desk. And as you've seen, we have a pool party happening and those, that is pretty much for the dream team. So if you've not yet joined the dream team, then uh, I would really want to encourage you. You're not 
you're not joining it for the pool party, you need to join at least. <laughs> Let me just clarify that. But I want to really encourage everybody in the house to join the dream team. You know, in this house, everybody serves. Why? Because we're one family. And you know, in a family, everybody has a job to do. Everybody has a responsibility. So in this house, we, 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 we like to serve Jesus, you know. So if you're not yet serving, then please um, sign up at the info desk and join the team. Amen. Well, before I close, I'm just going to hand over to Pastor Lee. She's got some information that she would like to share with you. Me again. All righty. Okay. So what we'd love to do is invite all of you for coffee. Please join us next door. We're going to have a delicious coffee. But then after that, we'd like to invite you to come back and witness this amazing graduation ceremony. We are not going to be here for hours. Whilst we just give the Lord glory for what he has done in their lives. Amen. And if you maybe join us for the graduation ceremony, then you get to join us again afterwards for coffee. But guess what we'll have this time? Cake! Nom, 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 nom. So if you want to stick around, we would really love you to join us as we honor these students, as we give the Lord glory. It's going to be not going to be busy for hours and hours. And then we're going to have delicious cake. Precious students, I want to tell you, when we leave here and your guests go to have coffee, I think you must save your coffee for the coffee afterwards and the cake. Because you don't have a lot of time. You just have little bit of time to quickly go for a comfort break and then you need to meet me right back here in the auditorium latest quarter to 11 all right okay we all good raise your right hands lord i lord help me to be back at quarter to 11 help me to be on time lord because you know I get excited, Lord. Amen? You see, we teach everybody in this, in this lovely establishment. Because, by the way, late coming, African time is a demon. I don't know if you guys know that. And this is a place where we do deliverance. <laughs> Alrighty, so that is just the quick little announcements that I had. Please join us for coffee next door. And then what I'd love to, if you felt God tug on your heart in any way and you want more information about this amazing course, then when you go to the coffee shop, in the counter in the corner, you will see it says there, Teshuva information. Just go put up your name, go put up your email address. We just want to send you an information fact so that you can make an informed decision. Go and sign up. It does not make you a student yet. Just, it will give us the opportunity to share some information with you. Is that good? Hold on. Did you have a good day? Are you glad you came? Amen. Thank you, baby. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask everybody just to stand. Please allow me just to pray over you and bless you. And, and I want to just say thank you to our visitors today for those that came, you know, to... Um, Really just honor us with your presence and thank you for coming to also celebrate what the Lord is doing through um, Teshuvah, uh, emotional restoration and deliverance. And I truly believe that God is doing a new thing today. We are so grateful. Amen. Just, um, just close your eyes. Thank you. Father, we thank you, Lord, that as we come this morning, Lord, I just, I just release your blessing that as covenant partners, Lord, that we continue to walk in the blessing of Abraham. Thank you, Father, that you have blessed us before the beginning of time. And therefore, Lord, we can declare today that we are blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed going in, blessed going out. And Lord, that everything that we touch and continue to touch, Lord, that it is and will be blessed. Thank you that from your abundance we have received one gracious blessing after another, that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And we thank you, Father, that the blessing of the Lord makes one rich 
and he adds no sorrow. Father, I thank you for your protection over your children. And Lord, that as we walk, Lord, that no no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And the gates of hell will not prevail against us. Lord, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And we thank you, Father, that we continue to increase, Lord. Increase in every area and every facet of our lives, Lord. In the wonderful name of Jesus. Thank you that we can run and do great exploits, Lord. In Jesus' wonderful and awesome name. Amen and amen. You may be, you may be, uh, I was going to say seated. You may go in there. We're going to have some coffee. Thank you so much. Can I please ask all the guests that will be joining the ceremony, can you please be back in your seat at 11 o'clock if you can kindly take your seat in the middle box. Thank you so much.